want to talk more markets. I uh, want to bring in uh, Jake Jolly, as a strategist and head of investment analysis at BNY Mellon Investment Management. Good morning to you. Good morning. So I, I don't know if you heard, you know, Lee Cooperman has a very sort of downbeat approach or attitude to where we are in the markets in terms of feeling overvalued. Are you in the same place? Uh, yes and no, which is, you know, the economist answer uh, in me. Uh, I think tactically, it's still a very challenging market. Uh, we are a little bit higher in terms of our recession probability. It feels like over the summer, a lot of people kind of came to a soft landing as a baseline. Uh, we don't think it's quite that optimistic. So, so but, gold, Goldman Sachs, Jan Hatzius went yeah. from 20% down to 15%. Yeah. I don't know how meaningful you think that actually is, but <laughs> uh, where, where would you put it? We put it more at about 50-50. 50, 50. Uh, over the next year, yeah, which is quite a bit more elevated okay. than sort of in an unconditional year. 15% to me sounds like an unconditional That's year. That's even more right? negative so. than I'd say where Jim Bullard is, who's <laughs> in a sort of potential soft landing scenario, no? Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to this debate about how the economy disinflates, right? Is it going to disinflate in sort of the traditional way that we've seen historically at the end of tightening cycles with, you know, slack needing to come into the economy through a recession? Or are we going to get this immaculate disinflation that we all hope for, but in our view is still a lower probability? Say, you don't sound like yeah. a believer if you think if you're calling it immaculate. We're more we're more believers than we were a few months ago uh, when we were in the thick of the regional bank crisis. When we were looking at how credit right. conditions were evolving, we were certainly more pessimistic. Now, sort of looking at the data, we are I wouldn't say believers, but we acknowledge that there's still a lot of uncertainty there, um, and it's something we're watching very, very closely. How do you think about the employment picture? I mean, just yeah. by the numbers, you'd think it's super strong, but when you talk to small businesses and others, and then even frankly big businesses, especially in tech and other other spaces, it does not feel like a thriving situation. Yeah, I mean, the dynamics in the labor market I think are, are very difficult to read right now. Um, you know, on the face of it, yes, very tight labor market. Um, obviously, last week we had participation rate going up, so moving the, the unemployment rate. But I think we're getting still a lot of crosswinds from coming out of the COVID pandemic, right? I think that sort of the way the companies are reacting, the way they're, they're treating their labor, there might be some labor hoarding in specific parts of the market, is certainly having a, a reaction and, and certainly making sort of these the impact of monetary policy uh, longer we, and We used to talk about labor hoarding. Right? I haven't heard anyone talk about labor hoarding in quite a while. Yeah. I'll bring it back. <laughs> you bring it back. Uh, Jake, we got to run. Uh, we appreciate you being here. You got to come on back. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you.